find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. And welcome to the Awesome Cast. It's the uh, show where we get geeky, talk, tech, social media, and more with the local nerds that use it and live uh, mostly in uh, Pittsburgh, PA. Actually, everybody here. Um, so I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, we're rolling here with the Awesome Cast with me on the couch. One, of course, John Chichilla joins us. How you doing, sir? How's it going? How are you? He's back in the studio. Good to see. And also, first time in, we finally rallied him in here <laughs> with the pizza from Slice on Broadway. It's Mike Pound. You are Uncle Crappy. Totally the pizza. Totally, totally the pizza. Yeah. Totally the pizza. And uh, <laughs> and bear with us. We do have a little bit of tech support going on the side. About podcasting. We're teaching podcasting in the podcast studio. Uh, so, But I think we're all okay with our mics here. Um, but anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. Um, you can check us out. We're here live Tuesday about around 6.37 p.m. Eastern time at live.awesomecast.net you can join us in the chat room just like uh, everybody else like the uh, juggalo john uh like chachi's in there waiting for his video game podcast to start alex cars out in california has been joining us a lot earlier hot wheels of course uh joining us down by california pa of course um but uh you can also check us out we're uh, awesome cast at uh, uh sorgatron media.com uh, drop us a line they awesome things of the week follow us on twitter awesome cast on there uh facebook google plus and of course please subscribe and rate us youtube itunes all the links at awesome cast awesome cast.net so let's kick it off with our awesome things of the week uh Shilla, let's go with you or you want me to go for is this no, one of those no 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 no, 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 no. On this one um, okay no, I just really liked your topic. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, we'll we'll lay the music talk on them so, in a moment. So the mine is actually and in, in, in I think a very joking way. Mm -hmm. um, Crazy Crow sent this to me at lunch, and he's like, "This should be your awesome thing of the week." And I'm like, "Wait a minute, this is pretty awesome." So Mattel is launching. Oh, wait, I just saw what this is. <laughs> 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 Mattel is launching a Barbie doll. Okay. That is internet connected. <laughs> and they're gonna call it Hello Barbie. Hello Barbie. And one of, so it's gonna be like a Siri or Cortana. It's gonna be hooked up. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> it's gonna be hooked up to the internet and it's gonna be able to carry on conversations with you. Okay. It's going to get Wi Fi updates so it can keep up with trends. Have you updated your Barbie lately? <laughs> <laughs> and it's going like and it's going to be able to carry on conversations, like talk to kids about future career paths, all this kind of stuff. And it's not necessarily the Barbie concept or the fact that this is going into a Barbie that got me excited. As I sat there and I thought about it, I'm like, okay, so you can't tell me the price point on this is going to be above 250 bucks because not many parents, it's not going to sell. Um, mm -hmm. to kids' parents, to me, at least, at, a, at a, an above $250 price point. Where this comes in to me is if you can get it down... So they're obviously making profit off of that. Let's just pretend it's... Let's just pretend it's $250. Say it's $100 profit, so you're talking $150 for the, for the device... Or for the Barbie. Mm -hmm. So... The, the cost is 150 now when you start thinking about okay 150 dollars in a thousand dollar refrigerator bumping that up to 1150 not such a big deal mm -hmm. throwing it in a tv at a 150 dollar cost not such a big deal and I'm, I'm just thinking i'm going around my house thinking hmm am i going to start carrying on conversations in every room and it to me it breaks down the what is amazon call theirs uh alexa uh, alexa yeah uh, uh, so it breaks Echo. down the alexa concept of okay i have to put an alexa in every one of my rooms mm -hmm. it's now put this technology in something and even if it's even if it's brand the same brand so mm -hmm. like i have a samsung tv we have samsung blu-ray players i mean we have samsung all over our house where, where iphone people buy by nature of the phone but 
when it, when it comes to other products, is Samsung is in a lot of rooms in our house, and so is Microsoft from the Xbox perspective, and, and some of the OSs running on different computers around the house. So having this technology built into a multitude of devices, I could if they're getting it into the price point of a Barbie, it can't be that far off that we could get this into everything all over our house. Mm -hmm. Not to mention something like the Alexa. I don't I I don't like the idea of Amazon running the Alexa because I think it's very self-centered and focused at Amazon drumming up Amazon sales and, and then tracking you to then give you other ideas of what you should be buying on Amazon from Amazon's perspective. Mm -hmm. Going into a third party like a Barbie or like your refrigerator or whatever, I, I just see it definitely coming into play all over your house. Not to mention, if have they cracked the nut of, of battery life? Because where are they going to... I don't even, I don't how even many know if we want to go to, here, but where are they going to store the batteries? charge my battery? Yeah. yeah. Or where do they charge... <laughs> what if you put the battery in a Barbie? <laughs> so, but, um, I, hmm. I, don't, I, I just see them... If they're getting... I mean, all, all it needs is a Wi-Fi connection, a microphone, and some, some cool tech mm -hmm. um, to get up and running. I don't see why we can't see this type of technology from a third party everywhere. It's not just reselling you other services from that from said party you could put it on your dog's collar <laughs> the dog follows you around you ask the dog questions What's... and it speaks back and it says hello finally <laughs> the oh it's today. like the dog what was a dog from uh up that had the okay. thing on his collar that when he barked okay. it would like it was some it, it interpreted it okay so, but i mean you could at that price point, I think you're getting close to the point where you could put them in other technologies around your house. Mm -hmm. and, that, mm -hmm. and that's where I see... I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it's pretty darn cool that a Barbie doll is going to carry on a conversation with you. It's a little creepy um, in, in some respects, but... You're, you're getting this a little... Weren't you getting this a little bit already? We're just kind of updating the technology. There was the doll that always talked back to you and, 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 and everything. Like, not Barbies, but like the baby dolls, you know. Baby dolls that, that talked back to you, or there was Teddy Ruxpin, where right. it was kind yeah. of preempted. It, it, it was a cassette tape. Yeah, it was a cassette tape. <laughs> <laughs> they had an alpha version as well. Uh-oh. Dog trying to get the pizza? I don't know. Okay. Well, someone was trying to get the dog. Ghosts. Barbies. Ghost Barbies trying to get the Ghost dog. Ghost Barbies. <laughs> I'm curious about... Um, just as a from a, a practical standpoint about the, about the Barbie itself, I'm curious... Oh, it, if if uh, Mattel's going to make sure that this is updated, they've had some difficulties in the past, like with uh, uh, promoting some ridiculous gender uh, uh, stereotypes with the Barbie line. And and I know now that they they they're more careful, and there are scientist Barbies and teacher Barbies and yeah. professor Barbies and stuff. Um, but but I mean that they could turn this into a real positive, which Mattel hasn't always been willing to do, or has been slow to do. Um, so I mean, here's how smart this is going to be. What uh, what sort of answers it's uh, it's going to come up with when you're talking to it. Um, I'm also curious about durability. And you, I, I watching watching my 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 niece uh, just a few years ago whacking her Barbies on the floor and dragging yeah. them around the house by her there with their hair. Um, I mean, what, and, and, I, and, you, and you mentioned this. I thought this when 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 you brought it up. Exactly, who is the audience for this going to be? Like I think it's like is that. It, I think it's that second grader and above age range, and it'd be interesting. So let's just pretend mm -hmm. that. So you introduce it to a second grader yeah. that's going to have a very limited vocabulary mm -hmm. and and limited understanding. And what if the Barbie grew with you through? I don't know. When do kids get rid of Barbies now? Six, three. I don't know. I still play yeah. with my Star Wars characters Bigger. or figures. Action figures. They're action figures. They're not. <laughs> I don't know. There's there's a Hulk Hogan and a Casey Jones behind uh, Crappy over there on the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, right there. Right so, there. I mean, I don't I don't know when you outgrow that, but mm -hmm. if it can carry on conversations yeah. about Did you, aspirations. Yeah, this. And, I'm reading would, this. I mean, that would be cool. And, and this is and Mattel has a chance to do something really cool mm -hmm. with this. Like, it, well, actually, like like Barbie. Uh, I forgot. I'm sorry. I didn't catch how much he got into this, but the, the, I'm looking at this where it's saying you're, the two-way conversation that will uh, uh, talk them about their their career paths. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, wow. And, and I, I was listening to I think it was 
this week in tech or something and someone was talking about their daughter and their daughter his daughter stopped asking him for help with vocabulary because she realized on the google tablet she could say okay google how do i spell ancient oh yeah oh, wow. okay um oh doctor was talking yeah about oh doctor was week. talking about it. so it's things like this and and i i thought they took it in a really good light of it's no longer trying to teach your kid about how to spell a word or a fact of this happened in such and such year it's about why it happened and why is it important mm -hmm. but that's, a, that's actually a pretty i don't know if it was a bill gates thing i was listening to or something else but there's yeah like there's been a few conversations like that i've been listening to where they're like yeah we don't have to figure out how the math problem works and memorize but why Right. You know, why did this happen? You know, Columbus, you know, did whatever in 1942. Great. We don't have to remember that. We have to remember why did he come over and what did it do? You know, I mean, that's that's more more critical thinking, I think. And we get to let the other stuff get out of the way, you know. So interesting. Interesting. Wow. Uh, so hello, Barbie. Go check that out. It, was, they have a release time frame for this? So it looks I like did not see a release date. Looks like they're at some kind of uh, a toy show or something. So if anybody's got daughters out there, they're uh, of age to get this, let us know uh, if, if you get your hands on it. So, and real quick before you get to yours, mm -hmm. so and we were, we, I was actually talking about this right before I left my house today, which is why I'm bringing it up, and this seems like a perfect time. So, what age do you guys think is a good age to give? your child electronic now first of all you're the devices. you're the one with the kid here with, with screen this isn't fair <laughs> <laughs> but no i'm i'm interested in anyone's opinion and and obviously the why so i i honestly said like a year ago i thought it should wait till like the two three age range mm -hmm. because i've heard of eye development mm -hmm. issues that's the only real thing i'm concerned with is the eye development. If, if is that, it going to cause an eye development mm -hmm. issue? And that's something that concerns me as someone that needs glasses and I can barely see my hand in front. Of, I can't read the time on a wristwatch without my glasses. Right. Now, that being said, I had no, none of those, I mean, I had a light bright. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that that's <laughs> the same I had a, a, a speak and spell. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was nothing, mm -hmm. anything like the screens we have today. No. And I'm still practically blind. I, I, I remember, for me, it was everybody was, uh, oh, he always has his face in that Game Boy. Mm -hmm. Which, let's be honest, it didn't have a backlight. So, yeah, I probably am partially blind because of that. Um, but, uh, you know, it, yeah, but it's so it's so persistent now. Uh, yeah. So, yes, it's, it's, it's definitely a much different. For me, and, and honestly, my, my uh, I don't look too, too much into this stuff. Like, kind of, you know, on the, on the outskirts. I figure I got nine months to figure it out whenever it happens. <laughs> so, I mean, it's going to gonna be research, nine months yeah. of research, and you have no idea. Like, I have this, like, like formulas of a preparatory plan mm -hmm. for kids and technology when this happens. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I've, I've watched what my sister does. And she, right. has, she has three kids. Right. Uh, right. Uh, two boys who are, are teenagers now and, and, a, and a younger girl. And, and she's, uh, she's watched pretty closely. I, I've been impressed with how she's handled this stuff. They all have devices of some kind now. And, and Molly is, uh, Molly is nine or 10. Um, so, you know, so, so she's got something of her own too, but it wasn't always that way. And Aaron was always careful. My, my sister was always careful about managing the time that they spent, uh, whether it's in front of the desktop computer that the family has doing that stuff. Um, whether it's, whether they have uh, some kind of device and how much time they get to spend with it. Um, she's been pretty conservative with it and I don't, I don't think, I don't see any problem mm -hmm. with that at all. I think it's just management. Like yeah. to, to me, it's, it, it's, it's management for mm -hmm. the most part. Um, and it's, 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 you know, make sure they go outside you know, at least a little bit, yeah. you know, and, but I think, I, I don't think, you know, you know, just, just general, just be like, don't have them to be sitting there doing something. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, if they're like playing Wii sports for three hours, great. You know, <laughs> or they're playing yeah. dance. I uh, played, uh, was it Just Dance? Is that one game? Yeah. Um, yes. I played that yes. a few weeks ago at the Carlins is, um, and uh, on their Wii and everything. And, and I'm just like, okay, okay, this is this is, this is is good. This is my first time experiencing this. We're, we might have to try this out because I was a big fan of DDR back in the day, Dance Dance Revolution. Right. Um, I have a pad in, in storage back there um, <laughs> that, that may or may not work. Next so. week on Awesome Cast. <laughs> you break out the Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> Welcome to DDR Cast. Um, but no, I, I, um, yeah, I think, I think management, 
Um, I think take advantage of those those parental tools, you know, like the mm-hmm. the time ones, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I, I think like doesn't the newer Xbox have one where you can set times or limits of some sort? I thought I heard I don't know if some Xbox of those. Does. That's a good question. Do and I think you can also uh, through the family sharing options and on ios devices because and i've used the i've seen the parental controls where you can kind of triple tap and you can lock it into the app and you right. can set that kind of stuff what area of the screen is usable can't leave the app without typing in a pin so you know, what gets me is so christopher's a little over 10 months and he likes the noises it makes mm-hmm. and he likes the fact that the screen lights up mm-hmm. that's cool to him he He's obviously not at the point he can he can't even really walk. So it's not like he's even really paying much attention to it, but he likes having it in his hand. So we went and got him a Fisher Price cell phone and it's Mm -hmm. or maybe it's I can't remember the brand name. But anyway, it has Sesame Street characters on it and he hits the buttons and it lights up and Elmo talks to him. He has zero interest in that and he completely can tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's not. You're not going to fool me. <laughs> and it's like, it, okay, I don't want to give this, this to you because it's so expensive. Mm-hmm. Well, is it, to me, that's where, you know, you know, the collection of stuff right, that I have you, around but, here. But that's so the kind of like, thing is. Here's an iPad one right here. Right. Go nuts. Here's you know? an old iPhone. Like that's, I think that's, to, to me, that's the way to do it. If you have that ability or you start having that ability where like, oh, I'm not going to sell this back or whatever. I'm going to hold on to the uh, that last iPhone and mm-hmm. that goes to the kid, you know, which is probably also good since the kid's going to break it. Even you know? in a different era, my, I, I know my nephews um, would prefer just old deactivated flip phones, flip phones that, yeah. that, that my uh, my sister and brother-in-law had. I've seen other over, kids with those too, yeah. things that are meant for children that are supposed <laughs> to look like that. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's a fake. And I want the real They want to be like mommy and daddy. Yeah. Mommy and daddy's on the cell phone all the time or the iPad or whatever it is. And, and they can tell they can, they're, they're not fooled by the plastic. What, facility. We actually took, cause he's obsessed with the remote for the TV. Mm-hmm. We actually took the remote. And I don't want to turn this into a kid thing, but um, this helps some quick. people. This is important uh, to yeah. some people. So, so we took, he was obsessed with the remote. So I went upstairs to one of the TVs that has a universal remote for the bo- cable box type device that we have plugged into it. And I took the batteries out of the TV remote that uh-huh. is exactly the same as the TV remote we have downstairs. And it's not good enough. He wants the one that <laughs> controls the TV. No, wow. it's not. I have the thing It's I have the thing oh. that does that. Yes. You know, it's, it's the interaction. It's a, what do you think? As we I continue our preview of whenever I have a kid and we have our daddy cast. <laughs> um, what do you think about the idea that the, the kid's going to have? their first interaction with a computer is going to be that touch thing and not a keyboard mouse or the Nintendo buttons or something like that. What do you think that's going to, uh, how do you think that's going to affect kind of their growth in technology? I don't, uh, because I think, or, or the, are you the person that's going to get a raspberry Pi and sit in front of the kid and see what happens? <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I'm completely okay with it as long as I can keep up with the technology and I have a technology related job. So it works out pretty well. Um, for me in, in my case, but what I would see happening is over time, obviously as, and we see it today where, where, at least where I work, the college graduates and, and, or people coming to that working age have expectations and they have an understanding that maybe the older generation doesn't have. And I feel like, older generation. <laughs> I feel like over the past few years, the technology has grown so fast that it has only broadened the gap. Mm -hmm. And I think there's even more to be said. I don't know if you want to call it in corporate America or just in the workforce where you you have to look at both sides. You have to look at the mid 50, early 60s, even into the mid 60s before retirement age people. And you need to lark, work, look at the technology technology person that's in their early twenties and adapt for both of them accordingly. I don't. I don't think there's the, there's no longer give yeah. them a typewriter. Yeah, yeah. It's or you. H- how do I explain cloud storage? <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Holy wow! 
How do you? It's you know, and there's actually, and I, I listened to Dan Benjamin's uh, "Back to Work" with uh, Merlin Mann, and they got into that because he had to explain what was he? He was explaining something like cloud storage to his eight year old, I think. And oh, and or also, and also the kid. This was interesting. The kid was trying could tell the difference between when he's being read a book on Kindle and when he's been written a book, a book book, a book book, book. Mm-hmm. and was starting to prefer the book is like daddy read me from the book you know and just like why does the kid okay. care you know and the, I, I don't know if it just seems is more the, important the pause you know? and the flip of the page i don't I, know no, i know i think it's just that that's the th- like that he's holding a book you know versus mm-hmm. he's holding this you know tablet. electronic device yeah this device and that is carrying a weight with him mm-hmm. in purpose i would think um but then, then think about it in reverse too so the the older generation is uh, is going to understand okay it could be we could have problems if we store all of our accounting information and employee social security numbers in a spreadsheet in dropbox versus the younger person says i just mm-hmm. want to throw everything in dropbox cuz i can get it from anywhere right right so, right right so like there's this there's this balance that i see up and coming and i think it's only going to get worse it is it school is going to have to turn into this kind of education yeah. like it's going to have to be more i i maybe for me being a non parent yet uh, I'm a little naive in it, but like in social media, I feel like like, yeah, there has to be education just like they're doing bullying education mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff about social education. That social media education has to be a part of it uh, coming up in elementary high schools, mm-hmm. especially, especially mm-hmm. high schools. Um, uh, hey, Doug actually has a, has something to chime in here. Uh, uh, the Doug of, uh, of course, should I drink that.com if you guys want to check that out. Um, doing great stuff with Google uh, Hangouts lately, too. I've been really liking what he's been doing, adapting the show to that lately. Uh, Teaspoon, his kid, uh, plays with all of his old tech, Palm Pilots, several PDAs. Uh, they love the old PlayStation 2. By the time he was three, uh, he could work a computer. Uh, both boys could use my cell phone just after they turned two. Okay. okay. And uh, and these are ones. He's one that um he was. I think he was snatching up VHS tapes so they could just use yes, those with their <laughs> and watch those and not have to worry about it. Because I've had friends with kids and they, I, those I'll see their like Disney DVDs sitting around and they're just destroyed. See, I look Absolutely at that. that that's destroyed. all. That's all digital store. That's what I'm server. thinking too. Like that yeah. turns into give the kid the iPad with the thing that he touches and it shoots the thing up to the screen. Like I like you've you've ultravioleted or put it on a server or what? I mean, that's yeah. To me, like I I rip all the DVDs I have sitting upstairs. It's sitting on a server. Those don't even like those go high on a shelf. So the kid doesn't like decides to play frisbee with a bunch of frisbees someday. Um, very expensive frisbees. Um, and and, and yeah, that just becomes <laughs> the interface now for the un i'm gonna make a server people out there um like netflix kids you know i mean that's Mm -hmm. that's really it you know i i think so well then the kid goes to someone else says why doesn't your house have the entire world of movies on the tv automatically exactly like you wonder like then that's the other thing i worry about like i don't want to spoil him but you know i remember going to a friend's house and he had satellite yeah so and i had a friend that had 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 a cable yeah, we are had cable, you know? I'm like, this is a different one. You know what I did? When I came, I would come often for a week or two in the summer down here to Pittsburgh to my grandparents, mm-hmm. and I would watch cable for two yes. weeks. Like, that was my, if I remember a show that was in cable in the 80s, it's because I watched it for two weeks <laughs> every summer, and that was it. <laughs> um, and it was bad. You couldn't, you could barely pull me away from it. Um, but I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. There's cartoons on like almost all the time. Then all this like old black and white stuff after like nine o'clock. I don't yeah. get that. I watched a lot of laughing. It was weird. Um, but anyways, uh, I digress. But no, I, I, I think it's really, interesting. let's know what you guys think too about a uh, VHS thrift store <laughs> two for 25 cents. Hell yeah. I'd say, Hey, I got a lot of wrestling tapes. If you want those, man, I, got I, a found, I found a of box of VHS in the, in the basement. Don't, yeah. If you want them. There you, you go. Them. There you go. <laughs> I'm just saying that they was trying to sell them. It was like, Hey man, I know they're not probably old enough for wrestling. They're probably ramp bucks is enough, but I got a bunch of the good ones. And you can wait for giving them the ECW ones I have. So anyways, <laughs> nice. anyways, let's get, let's move on in the awesome conversation. Uh, I had one that, um, Oh wow. We've been talking about this one for a while. Um, so, so 
I, have I mentioned about my Pandora issue on the show? I can't recall. So you, you're unhappy. Wait, the last thing I remember is you're unhappy because there's no longer a yearly plan right. that's by the month. Well, right. that was the idea. <laughs> so get the email. I, I double checked. It was back in November. They told me it's no longer yearly. Or, uh, it's five dollars a month. But you're such a great customer. But once those done, it's four dollars. So I'm like, I don't want to pay monthly. I don't want to pay monthly. That's my problem. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna let go. Whatever, right? Um, then I go to renew. Had to fix a credit card thing with one of my clients that's actually using Pandora for their office music, and it's yearly. It's like fifty six bucks. It used to be thirty six, but it, they had a yearly option, so I could take care of it. And then. My wife gets an email this week, same email as mine, but an extra paragraph about like 40 some bucks for, for the yearly. I don't care about the price increase. I just want to pay you one fee. Pay one I know fee. I'm being right. stubborn with this. So now I've moved on and I'm looking at other options. And um, I started poking around with stuff. I forgot I had a three month trial to Google Music that I got from Chromecast two and a half months ago. Um, <laughs> So I started using that. Love it. Already has most of my stuff up there because I did the sync thing. Mm -hmm. So all my music's up on Google. Uh, now I'm trying out there. I love like you log in and you get more space by doing if you sign up for that. Do you get more space? I need to look into collection? that because I maxed out the 20,000 songs. Okay. Um, I have a lot of CDs and I think I ripped them all. I got a lot <laughs> of CDs upstairs, dude. Um, again, that's the thing we're going to put up there because I haven't put a CD in to listen to in a while. Uh, but you go to their site, and, and I like this. This is added with the, with the music. And it also has the YouTube music key that we've been hearing about and the, 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 the new deals and everything. I didn't really get to dive in that. I have about, I don't know, a week and a half left on this. Um, but I like this. Like, hey, it's Tuesday evening. Play music for the brand new music, working out, family time. Um, there's all the lovey-dovey stuff around uh, uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, having friends over, you dig in this, and you're like, oh, chill hip-hop, scruffy dive bar rock. Scruffy dive bar rock? I know exactly. Did... <laughs> that makes sense. You know that one. Just songs are? Um, I don't know. Is that what this is from? Google buys songs. Are... Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So oh, it's, like it's Tuesday night. What are you doing? Yeah. With songs. Oh, okay. And it would nice. do okay. it based on time of day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes location. I you're, like you're this. You're on your way to work. You're stuck in traffic. Mm -hmm. Now, then I started looking at, because, uh, you know, kind of the, that, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, oh, wait, Prime is doing a what now? I can do what with Prime now kind of thing. And now we all watch uh, Mozart in the Jungle and Transcendent. <laughs> and and we're completely bought into it. I was just watching Superman animated episodes today. Uh, so I started diving in a little bit to Prime Music. And I think I'm going to go with this because I'm like, well, I'm paying for it. I can listen to my own music already up in Google Music. That's fine. So I'll, I'll listen to my stuff from there. Um and now that I have the Prime Stick, I can listen to the Prime stuff on the TV, and it's everywhere else for, for the most part. Um, it's interesting, because it, it's kind of... There's a little bit... It's playlists. That's the thing. It's not like, here's a radio station, here's a playlist, right? Um, so you get in here, and, and you're playing that same game of like, oh, recently added to Prime, and it's not everything. It's not like a feels like a complete collection like if you paid for google music or spotify and, and by the way thank you everybody responding on my facebook post the other day uh, like and most of them were spotify 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 um my sister's on prime that surprised me actually um but uh yeah it, it, you, you go in here and, and i'm just like i just want to put something on and the problem i have with this two well two things actually one um i love pandora because it was a thing that i got to boot up and i hit a station and that's it. And maybe just because I've just started with this, and like even Pandora, you gotta think I had to start with like, oh, let's see, what other artists have I not put in the playlist yet? You know, oh, okay, Nirvana, here you go. Oh, okay, uh, uh, Aerosmith, here. You know, we we take off from there and, and whatever. There's not as like I can make a playlist on stuff that's available on Prime in quotes, um, but again, it feels like there's a little too much work goes into this. Also, when I boot this up on my uh, Fire TV stick, it has apparently there was a promotion where we could upload some songs a while ago, and it has a whole 1,500 of my songs on there, and it was just going through those. So I actually have to go in on the site, take one of these playlists, add them to my playlist, and then I can play them on the TV. I that know seems like a, that seems That's, very cumbersome. Yeah, right. it is a lot of work. That's a lot of work, but I'm not paying anything more for it. 
So I, I, would, I, I so, don't know. So what I wish is that, and this would, I, I hear Spotify is like the curation mm-hmm. magician when it comes to this kind of stuff. I hear too. But, but what I want to see is, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to let you peruse my personal catalog. Now, you know what I have and now I, make mm-hmm. recommendations. And, and I feel like, I feel like Google might do that a little bit. And actually okay. I'm wondering when I was poking around a little bit at, um, the Amazon one. I'm wondering if they do that a little bit too, especially if you buy they, a lot of music on I, there. They do. They do. I'm. 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 I'm just. I, I opened up the uh, the entry page to, to to Prime Music, and I looked through this, and this is it's familiar, based on stuff that I've purchased from from Amazon. I don't. You know, I don't buy. All... Make recommendations, right. and most of these are are, are right on. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, even some of the, uh, the, the playlist. Okay. Maybe not Amazon mom favorites. I'm not sure that that's going to work. Yeah. Out. That was the other thing. <laughs> but I looked, it was like, like the first one's like mom favorites, best of what's new. Okay. Classical for creativity. And, uh, you know, there was a couple other ones, but they're all like weird topics. It seems yeah. like they're, it sounds like they're trying to be like the Netflix of mm-hmm. random, right. random categories. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Kids bop 27. This is <laughs> on right now. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm hold, I'm still holding out. I haven't. I actually thought about doing Spotify when it was ninety nine cents a month for the first three oh. months of the year. Ooh. I didn't take them up on that. Ooh. Google Music was it? Is it nine ninety nine right now? Nine ninety nine. Yeah. Started off yep. at I think six ninety nine. Yeah, they start. I think they gave you like forever. a, a five dollars for so many months or something like that. Right now, if you have Chromecast, and this is for new users, if you have a Chromecast. Um, there's a Chromecast offers go just Google it you'll find it it's like chromecast.com slash offers or something and it will actually um, you have to be on your network and it will actually connect to your Chromecast don't do this while you're watching your Chromecast because it'll interrupt it Um, so I'll do the connections like oh you have Chromecast and here's your offers right and sometimes I'll be two weeks of Hulu or some other services they're giving away six dollars free right now where they were and the six dollars free to to the Play Store right right Um, but yeah it's um, I I, like I'm not I don't know. Spotify, I, I, I'm not up for 10 bucks a month. So, so I'm I getting the fatigue, man. So I'm getting I the service fatigue. So I didn't, I didn't subscribe to anything mm-hmm. yet. What I'm waiting for is to see, and you guys are going to laugh, where does Beats Music go? No, that's that's legit. That, that's legit. I mean, with, to, with to be curious about. Jimmy Iovine <clears throat> coming in mm-hmm. with the folded Apple. Apple just over the weekend bought well i don't know you can't really buy a person but hi, brought on zane low from the uk you, from you can Radio buy a person. One. <laughs> you can buy a person. um i mean they're they're moving him from what i hear from the uk he's the number one radio mm. dj in the uk isn't i mean isn't iTunes... it, it's all about curation so beats is the one where it was almost like pandora mm-hmm. but instead of saying i'm feeling whatever you would say i'm on the back porch mm-hmm. in the summertime. Um, yeah, I, I got to experience. They have uh, Beats was free on the Southwest flight. Okay. So okay. and it was like you go into the browser and we have these playlists and, and stuff. And it was like that was that was basically it. Um, the playlists weren't long enough. Was my complaint for the flight. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so that was kind of rough. Um, I but, think they're going to be the curation. Yeah. And I sure. think they're going to end up. If they don't end up with the largest catalog and the most ex- exclusive, exclusives, exclusive, whatever, exclusives, we'll call it that. Um, I'll be surprised. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm waiting for the war. I'm waiting for the dust to settle a little more before I pick. And and here's my fear: is I don't want to go to create all my playlists, put all my music, and do all this work. And then three months from now go, oh, I like this other service better. So that's where I, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. If if I'm going to see, if you're going to see certain companies buying up other companies, mm-hmm. people entering the race late. I've, I've honestly thought Microsoft, their, their catalog is almost the same as Spotify. And you can get it with an Office 365 membership. So why not mm-hmm. at that point? I'll I'll pay for for whatever it is nine ninety nine a month or whatever some whatever it is per year um, unlimited cloud storage five copies of Office and music uh, that's not a bad deal to that's me that's a good deal <laughs> that's a good deal and I can play it on all my Xboxes and they have an app for my phone and and whatnot so uh, I'm st- I'm still waiting it out. 
Um, sorry, I just realized some audio problems we've been having this whole time. Um, that's interesting. We'll be doing a lot of editing later, so I hope this sounds great. Um, and I'm seeing how peaked we are on the on the backup, so this will be a lot of fun. Um, anyways, uh, geez, uh, I don't know where to go. Oh, hey, uh, 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 Uncle Crappy, you, yeah, what's, what's your, your 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 thing of the week? Why why did I come here? Why did you come here? <laughs> it's all about. The- oh, it's about the pizza. Oh. I've been talking. I've been threatening to do this for years, <laughs> and um, especially since you guys started getting the uh, the pizza from Slice on Broadway down here. It's been really tempting, and I've tried several times to make it here. Uh, things come up with with the job, whatever, but um, worked out this week. And I've eaten about half of the pizza that you guys got for tonight. Uh, for everyone who's coming in later, I apologize. <laughs> oh, you're but, the last ones. You're the last ones. But the pizza is is legitimately, legitimately the awesome thing of the week. <laughs> And that is our ad. Uh, slice on Broadway. <laughs> you should work out a deal whether they'll deliver to your house. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, we dig them. And with this, we had a lot of people here in in here tonight checking it out. So you know, on the shows and and uh, a lot of a lot of people got to experience the slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway dot com. They're here in the South Hills. Hey, it's your it's your legit awesome thing. But it's an ad <laughs> while we're at it, you know. Uh, but they support us. They they bring us a pizza every week. They're supporting Pittsburgh podcasting uh, with pizza. Um, so thank you very much for them. Check them out at uh, pgh underscore slice on the twitters. They're slice on Broadway on Facebook and um, uh, Instagram actually too. Uh, a lot of fun stuff on there. It will make you hungry. I realized because we used to do a newsletter when we had the cafe with all the baked goods. And I remember so many people saying, you're killing me because I'm downtown. I can't get out there for lunch to have this stuff, you know, and now I get it. (laughs) So um, on another, so so go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com and let them know the awesome cast sent you. So on that note, uh, on the newt, uh, we got, uh, we actually got an awesome email from our friend Alex in California with pictures, if I can find those. Do, do, do. But uh, he says, hey, guys, um, my awesome thing of the week comes from oh, it's entitled awesome, like, the plunders of the shack uh, comes from the much, lo- <laughs> mess, much less awesome circumstances. As you guys already know, Radio Shack had to close over 1700 of their stores recently uh, at, as their business continues to decline. Uh, one such store was in my vicinity. So I decided to take advantage of the uh, 75 to 90 percent discount on their inventory attach our photos of my findings which i have right here yes i'm familiar with these things um this is what i'm sad about like little dongles like this not dongles but like little like adapters like i obviously need with all the problems we've been having with audio tonight um but he, he, he says i pr- primarily purchased uh, additions to my home audio visual uh, kit adapters cables the whole deal i finally got an adapter to uh connect Sorry, uh, to connect my MacBook to a VGA connection. So that was cool. I even discovered a micro USB extension cable. Um, Fun times. I'm sad to see a business die, but such a fickle nature of the economy. Thanks for reading, Alex. Um, So, uh, yeah, you know, again, it's like, you know, oh, crap, I need a cord to do this. You know, how many times I've been on a shoot, you're like, oh, go go get this adapter, right? Um, Like, there's a Radio Shack somewhere in X miles. And that's the Not anymore. That's the one that that was the last tech store in the city, right? Mm-hmm. Like I need I needed an adapter. I needed an HDMI cable. I needed I actually that's where I got my Nexus Seven. Like there's so many things that I'm like, oh, I need this. I'm gonna run down to Radio Shack Did you because the one that's just off Market Square. The <laughs> one that's up towards Grant Street from Market Square. Okay. Not the big okay. one. Not the big store. Okay. Um. Usually, because the other one was closer to my to where I work, but I yeah, I can't tell you how many times I went in there. I I needed a thirty two gig USB drive, and I looked up which store in the city had it in mm-hmm. stock, mm-hmm. and so what was the cheapest check. device. I, I mean, there's so many things, and I needed something that was a little higher performance than the CVS device. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't. I I I just feel like. This is, I, this is a loss. And until Amazon can deliver with drone immediately, 
Yeah. I feel like this is a huge loss. Your options are gone. When yeah. I, when I started my, my current job, um, it, there's there's a, a radio shack just off of Market Square, which is a, a very short walk. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once I got to my desk and figured out, okay, the stuff that I brought from the old job, some of this will work, some of this will not. I just, and I just need longer cables. I need a, a, a USB hub. It's just dumb little stuff. Mm-hmm. Um and I can order it and wait a few days, or hey, I can walk over to Radio Shack on my lunch hour uh, and, and drop a few bucks and walk back to my office with everything that I need. Um, and, and I can't, I, I, I can't say that I go to Radio Shack a lot, but to be able to do that, uh, sort of when 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 you need to, uh, that that was a very cool thing, uh, and something that will eh, that'll that'll be a, a drag when they're gone. I mean, I've used them in in Dormont, like right on mm-hmm. on. Whatever that street is, down in next to Coons. Oh yeah, yeah, in the plaza. I, I've run yeah. into I've run into there real quick. I, just I always feel bad because I go in there and I'm like, I'm just getting a thing. I know exactly what I'm getting. <laughs> I'm getting yeah. this thing that goes from here to yeah. there. Can I help you with anything? It's like, nope, I know where it is. You know, I was like, I feel like it's my fault. <laughs> it feels like <laughs> oh, um, you're in there buying stuff. No, it's no, no. I don't want to buy a phone. I don't want to do. Yeah, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but. Eh. Well, you know, it'll be interesting. Will Batteries Plus like take on and just the Plus and Batteries Plus will become what? cables and connectors? Yeah, right? Is that too? I, I, well, I think it is. I, well, I, I think it is a bit. I actually, uh, uh, the disclosure, my mother-in-law works at a Batteries Plus out in California. All right. And she's replacing batteries in iPhones, for instance, you know. Um, yeah, that, that's the go-to place. Or maybe we'll have mm-hmm. these little kind of boutique stores. Maybe a cords and stuff will open up. And, and, and a lot of the conversation I'm hearing is like the, wow, they missed the boat because why didn't Radio Shack target the, the maker community? Not big mm-hmm. enough a community, I bet, mm-hmm. uh, for one thing. But growing, you know, you could have at least got a foothold in that. Instead, they went to be another place you can buy smartphones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great, we need another place to buy smartphones. Like they took the easy bet. Why would I go to a Radio Shack to buy a phone? That I don't know. Like, I I don't know what, other than they're everywhere, you know, I still feel like, I don't know, to me, I, w- I wouldn't like going to a reseller for a phone anyways. I feel like, like, no, you go to the Verizon store, you go to the AT&T store, you know, like the yeah. little kiosks that are very suspect in the mall. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, but anyways, I actually have a little bit of history in that because I was a representative for AT&T Wireless at one point. It was a very, very odd situation in a Staples. Not Staples. No, Circuit City. Yeah, Circuit City. Out of Robinson. Okay. It was like, I went out there. It wasn't Sun TV? No, it wasn't Sun TV. (laughs) (laughs) It was Sun TV. (laughs) Wow. Um, No, I would go out there, and I was a representative to try to sell the AT&T phones through the Circuit City, and Mm -hmm. there would be somebody there from T-Mobile or Verizon or something hanging too, and it was just like, you know... I don't know. Very weird. Very, very strange. Just, I think Best Buy has, um, I, I've, I've, it's been a while. I, and maybe I've seen this like at the, the mall in Boardman. Mm-hmm. Best Buy has uh, smaller versions of their stores that sell, that specialize. They're, they're, they're tiny things. Yeah. Nothing yeah. Mm-hmm. like real, the real yeah. stores. Yeah, thing. But they sell, I mean, it's just, it's just cables and connectors and, and, and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm, I, I, There's your they have vending shop. machines too. The vending machines yeah. in the mall. Yeah. Like, I was astonished when I found the Best Buy vending machine at the airport. I'm like, yes. mm-hmm. I think you want to yeah. buy an iPod? You know, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I think travelers, that's the only chance they get. You know, they don't mm-hmm. really see the city. They see where they went and back in the airport. Yep. And that's it. You know, and the um, markup in the airport's ridiculous. Oh, of course, that will on everything. Jeez, I spent thirty bucks for two meals at Burger King. I think I in I, Las Vegas. I think I buy a pair of earbuds every time I fly somewhere because I never remember to bring a pair <laughs> and I have to get by a pair. In the Thirty airport. dollar earbuds, mm-hmm. fifty dollar earbuds, mm-hmm. something like that. Well, we got a couple stories. We'll get one of them in here. I I have to talk <laughs> about this one. We have to do this one. Um. You guys remember Viewmaster, right? Hey, you know, this is actually, you know, there was the Barbie stuff this week, but there's also Viewmaster. This was the thing that you uh, put on. This is our, this is our, this is our original Google Glass. This is our original uh, Oculus VR because it was in 3D and it was these little cards you put in and you spin it and that doesn't sound right. Uh, But now they're, they're apparently redoing the Viewmaster with the specs to Google Cardboard the cardboard VR, you stick a phone in it and it works kind of thing. That's 
awesome. <laughs> Like it's such a one one for, for, first of all the kids the kids got to have a uh, unfortunately the kids got to have a, a an Android phone on hand in order for this thing to work um, but still I love like they they completely resurrected this brand out of nowhere um, that's that's awesome that's awesome um, but uh, yeah go to, I don't know what do you guys think about this like there's another version we talked about the LG one uh, last week I think right see yeah and where we were at, what I, at least I was saying was is that. I can't find a use for it in my life. Now, I, I could see see this as a good adaptation. Right. Like, right. Where's that killer app? Right. Here yeah. it is. There and, you and, and I like what they, the, if it's, I mean, Mattel, again, is doing this. It's, they have exclusive content with, star, licensed content with Star Wars and a bunch of other stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. I think or, they could make a gold mine off of this. I remember looking at all those packs, you know. Oh, wait, there's a He-Man one on there and it's just like yep. stills in 3d from the episode but it looked fantastic <laughs> you know and tunisium should do a, a view master uh exhibit it's a great <laughs> thing so great just a real satisfying clunk when you when you advance the clunk the like, do, they, cards. Yeah. do they still clunk that someone if they don't do that naturally if someone is smart they've they figured out a way to replicate this it's not really a lever on it uh. On this thing, uh, from the looks of it, so I don't know. There has to be something because they were they are gonna sell like the cartridges type thing. So there must be something. Mm-hmm. You probably speak to it. Mm-hmm. Probably say hello, Viewmaster. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, but I guess so. I, I'm thinking, and I was reading down through the article you have posted here. So think about the Google Glass. Um hidden thing where it was the picture and you could look all around mm-hmm. now go back to your oh it was the he-man still that was in 3d but it looked so good <gasps> i can drop into a he-man filmation episode in 3d all so, around yeah me. you could be all around you i can be in eternia oh <laughs> you could be but you could be in my anything. child like mine is just exploding at these possibilities you could uh, sit in the middle of a ring during wwf wrestling Okay, that's what. Okay, there's a problem with that actually because it's the film. I mean, I guess if it's a 3D version, not actually that, you know. And yeah, I mean, they'd have to I design mean, around it. Yeah, right? they'd like design around it. It's not like we could mm-hmm. shoot it in 3D and you're just kind of there and looking around and stuff. Yet, 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 yet. yet. Man, blowing my mind, man. Um, <laughs> Viewmaster, go check it out. Um, there's there's pictures up on uh, Engadget on on Verge all over the place. Everybody really picked up on this thing because everybody had a Viewmaster, especially techie kids, right? I mean, it seemed like it seemed like the thing. There's, um, there's one in my house somewhere. It's one in your house there, somewhere. There I'm trying to remember. Like, was my mom have it? Do I have it somewhere? You know, do you know? There's a. I remember having an African safari one. Oh man, those were the days. The anti-theft kill switches in iPhones are working. Who would have thought? That's just crazy speak. They're the the. Uh, I don't know. My my brothers got stolen, but I don't think they realized that they were in there. I think the person just didn't know. They're just like it's a phone, I, and it's not somebody that does it on a regular basis. Like they were just like I need rent this month. Um, stolen iPhones dropped by forty percent in San Francisco. There's a lot there. I bet the San Francisco. I just coming from the airport. I saw like six iPhone billboards. It was nuts. Like, they need to be reminded in San Francisco right. about the iPhone. <laughs> right. um, 25% uh, drop in New York uh, after uh, in, in the 12 months after uh, Apple Inc. added kill switches to its devices in September 2013. In London, smartphone theft dropped by half, according to an announcement by officials in the three cities. And this is according to Reuters.com. Um, good. I mean, and, and I think California is bringing in the law that every phone needs to have this. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, which I think is a bit of a stretch. I, th- I think it's a little bit of an overkill, but still, I think it's a feature that you should probably buy a phone based on. You know, be like, well, I have a kill switch. They're not running around with all my info, you know, and it's useless. You I, know? Think, I think it's a competitive advantage thing where you'd be, as a manufacturer or, uh, yeah, I guess manufacturer, it, it's a it, it's something you put in your device to to bring people to the platform, not something that you want to mandate that people put in their phone or device because i mean here you could take it to the the extreme of 
Okay, every every device has to have a single button in the center of the bottom that takes you back to a main screen. Mm -hmm. And then every device has to have a screen that's at least X amount, but smaller than X amount. Like, I feel like they're taking away from the manufacturer's freedom to, to develop or build the device how they want. Um, maybe there's a person that feels kill switches is big brother watching them and they they don't want people to have that access. Yes, you cannot turn it on, but I don't think that's how they're up playing it. Mm -hmm. The state of California is um, uh, historically uh, loves jumping in the middle of, of a, a consumer related issues like this mm -hmm. where, where they may or may not actually have I've any business. Noticed. Um, I've noticed. It's been really interesting watching stuff and I mean, I, I you know, with, with the, you know, family out there and being out there, like mm -hmm. I've been keeping more, even more of an eye on what's going on there. I don't want to live in California. They're, it's crazy out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, nice place to visit. Um, and, oh, and, and it's not just, this, it's not just this, this industry. It is, it is across the board. They, they love regulating uh, consumer related stuff. I, I think what I mean that that's uh, what what John said about this being a, a, a an actual a selling point rather than something that um, we we need we need to tinker with as consumers. I think that's that's a legitimate thing. Mm -hmm. As um, educational but, course on that, yeah. but still, like the Verizon guy saying, well, this phone has the anti theft thing, and this mm -hmm. one doesn't. If you're worried about that kind of thing, mm -hmm. about security, and especially today, you know, I, I think that's 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 good to be talking about. Well, there's a cost that comes to that, right? I mean the, the the manufacturer slash developer has to build that and make that, and it, it increases the cost. Mm -hmm. There's a back end system that the, the the carrier or company needs to upkeep to make sure that it can remotely kill the device, and keep that registration theory going. When you start to add in all these features, they come at a cost. Where mm -hmm. the, the company's not eating the cost on that. On that, they're they're going to have to pass that cost on to the consumer, and it also brings cost and expense to the cheaper line of devices mm -hmm. i look at it so does is every car in california does it have to have anti-theft and security is this a software thing though it's a software thing but it's based on find my iphone and it's based on registration yeah. so there's a back-end system that true. that apple has to keep up and running for that to work mm -hmm. i mean if apple closed its doors tomorrow and you you wiped a device it probably wouldn't initialize properly because it has to check in with Apple when it when it comes back online. It's true. So, I, I think there's something to be said for that, and there's something to be said for devices that don't have those types of requirements. It, it's just one of those things where nothing comes for free, and people are going to have to end up paying for this, and it's going to raise the bottom line mm -hmm. on the on the on the cheaper phone devices. Moving on, uh, uh, you mentioned on here uh, Google Glass did a couple weeks ago. Now Google Helpouts. Yeah, so April 20th. And, uh, I and, think it's April And to 20th. be clear, Helpouts were like a version of Hangouts that you could go in and, and they kind of had their own kind of marketplace. I was real close to jumping in on this a few months ago, um, and I'm glad I did not now because it would have <laughs> been a really short experiment. I, think, I feel like it only came up in like the summer. It came out at the mm -hmm. same time as Glass, right? Really? Oh, so it's actually like a year old. Helpouts came out at about the same time as Glass, and I I have a feeling the two were meant to be coupled. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling the theory was you want to help someone out, you could show either they could show you what they're doing, or you yeah. could show so, them what so you're doing. So the idea is like you go in, like I would go on and say, um, okay, I'm a social media expert. I want to teach somebody how to do X, right? Um, and you have your rate, and people can search for you. And and you can give like maybe the first half hour free and whatever that is, and they handle like all the in between stuff basically. Yeah. Somebody buys a time, schedules it, and you go. And it's using like the Google Hangouts kind of video platform for this whole thing. Um, but also interesting was the new Google customer service. If you have a device or something. And it's over Hangouts, and that was it was on um, uh, this week in Google. They did this last week because they love calling tech support in the middle of the show. <laughs> um, but uh, they're like, no, it's Hangouts. You know, it's not. This is not Helpouts, and now we know why. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but interesting that they're using that more directly with the tech support. So um, it, it was a good service. It was a good idea. And but honestly, anybody with a little initiative can do this now with Hangouts. That was one of my first thoughts was to do something like this with a hangout mm -hmm. and say, oh, we sell webinar space and we, we invite you into the call when you've paid for it, you know, and now you're part of the tutorial that we're going to do. 
and it's interactive. Um, I think that's something you can do, and there's more and more tools every day to do that even better. So, yeah. Um, sad to see it go, certainly. I mean, yeah, I am. And I mean, it was such a vast marketplace, right? I mean, it was anything from financial advice to psychiatrists to to guitar lessons to pretty much anything. So I'm, I'm hoping they come up with something or are pointing people at a different... There's other platforms that pop up because of this. You know, I, I, I just saw this pop up. I want to talk about this one, um, about this product placement here. I, I want to attach before this. I just watched Chef. I actually watched it twice over the weekend. We talked about it on the Rambling Movie Minute. You can check it out at uh, thatramblingreview.com. Um, and I felt like when I watched Chef, if you haven't watched it, it's very much about social media and uh, he gets a food truck and all this stuff, right? And the way it was presented, I kept thinking, and I, having recently attended and watched a little bit of the uh, Twitter documentary that they put together to promote Twitter and how people are using it, like at midnight and everybody. Um, and like, I think I even got into NBC News. That's funny now. Um, <laughs> we have a whole other show talking about that, oh, right? God. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, but... But this one, uh, so, uh, Lachilla, was this you as well? Yeah, uh, that was the me. The Modern so Family Febu- episode? February 25th, I guess that's next Wednesday, because I think Modern Family's right. on on Wednesdays. Yeah. Um, the entire episode is going to be pretty much a screen recording of a Mac book running Mac OS, and the entire episode is going to take place as a recording of that screen. Oh wow! So, uh, from what and, and I, I read a couple other. There's sites, a horror movie that just did this too, but I think she's trapped in an airport after issues with flights, and she's trying to get a hold of the family, mm-hmm. and they use FaceTime and iMessage and whatnot. So, but. I, I'm actually interested in seeing this whole episode. I, I want to see how they make this work. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's, it's an interesting concept. But it just goes to show that any podcast could become a TV series. Right. I mean, anything could become... I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see where other people take this concept. I had this a little bit. Well, we we've talked about it. we we were going off about promos on the on the wrestling shows last week, mm-hmm. and actually on NXT, which is on the WWE Network, is their kind of developmental uh, uh, thing. And there's some guys on there, uh, and uh, they go by Enzo and Cass, and they did a thing where they're out working out, and this, and they cut, you know, like this interaction has like the backstage interaction, like you get with wrestling, shot obviously on an iPhone. And we were talking about like they did that. And I got to watch it on my TV, on the TV show, right? That's right. like not only is it on the network, it actually is distributed around the world, is you know, in, in, in a lot of markets. So it's like, and I'm thinking like, okay, you indie wrestlers need to look at this and think about what you're doing. And I've seen some tremendous stuff indie wrestlers are doing on YouTube with an iPhone. Pittsburgh Dad shot on an iPhone, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, that was brought up at the recent uh, Steel Town Indie uh, event uh, with filmmakers, people making real films, and they're like, "Well, I'll just use the iPhone," you know. And look, uh, they had like a million hits over the Super Bowl weekend, you know. I mean, look at that stuff. I mean, we're we're shooting with way higher end stuff than iPhones here in the studio. <laughs> Not this. This is a webcam, but still, we want to upgrade it a little bit. Um, you know, it, it's it, it, really cool that they're doing this. It's shot with i iPad Air 2s and uh, iPhone 6, so that's plenty of horsepower, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still love to get, um, when we swap up, get our new phones and, and, and do, you know, switch down the line in our family, I'm like, I need those iPhone 4Ss back. Because mm-hmm. I can have a lot of fun with those. I wish I still had the one that I had for my old job. Just to do video, uh, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. just, like, not, not yeah. even do anything. Just, like, clear the thing. <clears throat> yep. Just do video on it. Yep. I was looking at, I forget where it was. There's something, and I actually think the new version of Wirecast will actually take video straight from an iPhone. And I think there's some other mechanisms to do that, too. And just be mm-hmm. like, well, this is my camera, you know? And probably as good, if not better, than the webcams we're using right now, mm-hmm. to be honest. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's that's the way to go, I think. There, there, I mean, in, in my in my newsroom, you know, the the, uh, the photographers, they, they still all will come back or they will send something back from the scene. And, and, and it's almost apologetic. Oh, it's a shop with an iPhone, so, you know, what? But... What what they don't get, not all of them get yet, is just with a little extra consideration and maybe stand a little bit closer. They you can take stuff that that will work for pretty, for the website and yeah. will work for print. Um, yeah, yeah, it's they're 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 that good. Definitely, 
Definitely. All right, real quick, I want to run through these. VLC's popular media player will soon support Chromecast? Mm-hmm. All right. I, like, I really like their media player, both from a mobile device and um, desktop app, so I'm, I'm actually excited about that. Awesome. Awesome. Go keep an eye out for that. And, of course, uh, I got this update. Not that I can really use it, but uh, any app that works with Android Wear <laughs> now works with your Pebble. Uh, I consider for a mere moment to actually sync it with my tablet and see what happens. Um, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. That's like the old Google Glass issue I had. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I did the update, and now I got a man in the corner, and I don't know why. I haven't figured that out yet. You got a man in the corner? I got a little man in the corner now. I try, asked Chachi. He says he doesn't have that, but he didn't update it yet. Because, But he's got a Google phone, so he should do he this. He should do yeah. Of all he people. Um, and report back to us. No, there's a little home and there's a little guy in the corner now. Come on, I Josh. don't know if that Maybe it means you're at home. Is it's that... tracking where you are. Oh, I, I might be. Clue. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've been having fun with it, though. On a, on a real quick note before we close out, you actually tweeted about virtualization and using like a SSD... Yeah, USB SSD. It's like some like high end USB uh, SSD hard drive, and they're like, oh, and, and the, art- the the article was actually on the angle. It was like, hey, this is a really easy way. Didn't look real easy to me <laughs> uh, to put Windows on a thing to just do an external Windows drive if you're on like a 128, you know, SSD mm-hmm. MacBook, right? Uh, I'm on a 250. And I'm crunched as hell on this thing. Um, and that way you're not. And I and I did the extra 30 gigs to throw the Windows 10 on it. You know, one, one of the one of the things that I, I found was interesting because right after you tweeted that and I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, I still want to run both at the same time because of what I'm doing and I'm not tied to like video intense Windows type applications. It's not like I want to play a Windows game per se. I'm trying to use something that's not on the Mac per, mm-hmm. for the most part. Mm-hmm. There's a way, and I, and I posted a link to the article on Windows Super Site. There's a way that you can actually point both vmware and vmware fusion and parallels to the drive the boot camp drive and run in both virtual and boot camp mode so if you want to bring up a windows app on the fly Mm -hmm. while mac os is up you can do that Hmm. or if you want to get the full power out of the machine you can reboot and go in through boot camp. So you don't have two because normally you'd have to have two installs, right? Like one virtual and one boot camp. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Now you could take that partition and point VMware and Parallels at it and run apps off the Windows side simultaneously on top of Mac OS. And if you're just running Word, that's I'm sure that's fine. If you're just running mm-hmm. some smaller stuff, that's fine. But if you wanted to get the full power out of the machine to play a video game or something, then you could jump into mm-hmm. boot camp. The only thing they said is make sure you shut down the Parallels or VMware instance yeah, before I remember, rebooting. I remember my days of Parallels early on. Yeah, it gets It's a come a long way, I think. I'm sure it has, but I remember it was, it was rough. Rough. <laughs> um, all right. On that note, um, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. If you haven't yet, go over to uh, awesomecast.net. Uh, we're still doing our... I, I keep changing the name. I haven't settled on a name yet. I'm just going to keep doing them. Right now, they're just mini awesome casts. <laughs> that's that's just what we're going with. Uh, but if you go in there, like I talked about the Office 365, getting a, a compatibility with your iCloud storage on iOS devices and iWork uh, being available to people that don't have iDevices now. Um, and we've talked tackled some other stuff like uh, the pay once and play games getting featured on the uh, App Store last week. Um, we talked about, oh, hey, uh, awesome cast. So we're trying to meet featured in Pittsburgh Bold Magazine. Uh, so go check them out as well. The article's over on awesomecast.net. Um, geez, what else did we talk about? Android Wear with, uh, with the low numbers on what was sold so far there. So get it on that. If you have any any, any thoughts on the stuff we're talking about, go uh, uh, converse with us there. And of course, uh, still doing all kinds of other stuff over on sorgatron.com. We have a wonderful video that we released this week. Maybe some of you guys have seen it. Uh, it's about Pittsburgh. It's about the little known parts of uh, Pittsburgh uh, with this guy named uh, Sawtooth um, Sawtooth Willie. I won't say the last name, uh, but we got a little bit. I got a little bit into like some of how he came about and some of the stuff that we did, including we actually did a live stream here in the studio as we were recording this and the Valentine's Day Yik Yak video. <laughs> so we just threw out of the hangout and it looks like like 20 people popped in. So that was kind of cool. Um, so a little bit of conversation about that old technology um, and of course, a little bit of John Stewart talking, and of course, the Steeltown Indie event that I attended last week up there as well. Um, 
around the area. I don't know if you have anything, but I didn't really have too many events coming up this week or anything in the Pittsburgh area. No, not that I'm aware of. So, um, if you have any, if there's anything to check out, no, Bill uh, Bill Go Pittsburgh did announce their March uh, meetup date, so go check that out. Um, There is Open Coffee Club, not this Friday, but next Friday, the 27th, I believe, um, out at Alpha Lab, I think out in East Liberty they are now. Um, You can check out, uh, look that up on Facebook, actually, for, for that event. So, with that, guys, thank you for being here. Um, this is your awesome cast, of course. Uh, we're out here live Tuesday. It's about 6.30, 7 o'clock uh, we get started. Uh, P.M. Eastern Somewhere Time, right live.awesomecast.net. <laughs> uh, awesomecast on Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Plus. You can email us your thoughts like Alex did in your awesome thing of the week with pictures. You can do video, too. That's cool. That's all right. We can get that in there somehow. Awesomecast at SorgatronMedia.com. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, all kinds of other places linked over at AwesomeCast.net. And thanks to Mike Allen at MikeAllenPR for helping with the notes and the tweets. Chilla is at Chilla on Twitter. That's where I can be found. Crappy is Uncle Crappy. Mike Pound on Good the speakers. Twitter. Thanks for the pizza. UncleCrappy.com. Yeah. A lot of stuff yeah. happening there. I see, I see, yeah. I see posts every Actually, once in a yeah, while. Once in a while. Good stuff. Good stuff. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> what do you what do you write over there for people that haven't checked you out? Uh on UncleCreppy.com? Yeah. Um did whatever comes to mind. I, I, it's just your general bloggy blog, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I think I'm I've got, I have to I have to put up a post about what I'm giving up for Lent, which I think is gonna be um, um machine cuisine. See that you guys days without you you guys are, are much better than that vending machine. You, oh. you vending and machines. Doug are much better than I because I just converted my blog into a video blog. Okay, because I'm just like that's what I do. Uh, well, I mean that makes I, sense. I'm 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 at the at the very basic level. I'm a writer. So I've I've given up on that. I'm going to be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> basically that's where i'm at okay. i'm like you know what i got this i could turn this on in the morning and i can get a thought out there yes. and it's been really it's i've got a lot of feedback it's, re, it's been really cool the last couple of weeks so we're gonna keep going with that and see where it ends up thank you to our awesome chat room again live that awesome cast whoop, 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 the uh live that awesome cast.net somewhere out there in the internets uh thanks to the guys joining us including chachi bobby uh Jello john uh alex and uh wheels and of course mac allen's out there as well um and thank you guys for letting me know that there was an audio prom tonight we'll see how this sounds later <laughs> that's why we do a backup that's not through the same thing we'll see if there is sound yes <laughs> ladies and gentlemen welcome to the first pantomime awesome cast <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> audio <Nice>. listeners <laughs> i'm sorry i am in a <laughs> <the> box <laughs> Talk with your hands. We should have had Mike on here. He's got that Italian hand-talking thing going on. (laughs) Anyways, with that, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. If you like professional wrestling, want your discussions, no holds barred, check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle. <laughs>